Now, if you'd like to transform your living room into a home theater experience, and we're talking about not even having to have things completely dark, but even when light coming into your living room, then you'll want to watch this video because today we're going to talk about the brand new Caceres A6. This is a tri-laser short throw projector that's going to give you anywhere from 80 inches to 150 inch screen. That's an incredible movie experience. Let's go and check it out. Now this is a 4K ultra short throw projector that's going to accommodate a lot of different room form factors. Because it's an ultra short throw, it means that it can just sit inches from the wall and give you an image anywhere from 80 to 150 inches uh, in size. You don't have to have it hanging on a ceiling far away. It's literally just inches from the wall. This is again, 4K, 2200 ANSI lumens, and if you have the right screen, you're gonna have great image viewing even during daylight. You have, again, eight point keystoning, which means that it allows you to adjust the image so that you have it centered where you'd like it on your screen. And as I mentioned, you could go anywhere from 80 to 150 inches. It has Bluetooth 5.0. It also has two 10 watt speakers, supports uh, Dolby Digital Audio, right? And also a wide variety of formats within the audio spectrums. Has low latency gaming so that you can play gaming on this projector. One thing I will highlight that while it does support low latency, it's not for competitive gaming. Now from a connectivity perspective, you have two HDMI ports which do support ARC, two USB ports, one LAN port, a mini USB, and also optical out. Now before taking a closer look at the Caceres Ultra Short Throw Projector, we're going to talk about kind of what our setup is like. Now, first of all, you can see that we have a very well lit room. So we have ambient light coming through uh, both of our windows and this actually has one, two, three, four, five, six windows that have some shades, but these are not blackout shades and you can see the kind of light that's coming through. Uh, we do have a, an elite screen um, ambient light rejection screen, right? So this is basically a CLR screen. You can see it's gray and it's gonna help this projector uh, because what it does is it uh, rejects light from left, right and, and the top. It really does a really uh, good job of amplifying the blacks, bringing in the great experience. So highly recommend that you have an ALR or CLR screen. You'll see that the projector is just placed a couple inches from the wall and that's what set these projectors apart. Um, while the system does have a fantastic audio platform, uh, we're going to be, uh, or I've been experiencing it both with the built-in speakers, but what we also have is an Enclave, uh, again, their pro version of their surround sound system, which is something that I really love, and you see that on both sides. So uh, let's go ahead and power up this unit, and as we power it up, I just wanted to highlight how fast this thing is, because it is one of the fastest startup projectors that we've had in a quite some time. So I'm just going to press the power button just to give you guys a sense of what the power of the startup process looks like. And then watch this. So you get that animated logo and then it should just pop into the screen. So it's right now searching to see if I have any kind of active uh, connections and I just pushed another remote just to make sure that the image would come on the screen. But that was really fast as you compare to some of the other projectors that we've looked at in the past. Now, I am running an NVIDIA Shield on this. This does come with an Android um, TV box that also gives you the ability to stream in 4K. I'm actually using uh, my Android and NVIDIA Shield because I have it set up for what I need to do. Now, next step is we're gonna actually go into the operating system so we can see what's included and you can get a sense of what you can expect. The other thing I wanted to highlight about this is the fact that, again, you can see the type of performance I'm getting in this lit area. And I purposely like doing these type of reviews in a lit situation because let's face it, we do not all have rooms that are in the perfect lighting situation for projectors. So you're seeing everything as if this was in your home. Now, the very first thing just want to highlight is that you do get a really nice remote. Uh, so this remote allows you to control all the features and functions um, on your device. And uh, we've been using this. Uh, you can uh, connect things uh, directly to it and then just use those remotes to control audio. Um, I'm using my NVIDIA Shield in that case, but just has a very functional remote. Um, it's, it's thin, it's small, and it does what a remote's supposed to do. 
Now, starting at the very top, you'll notice that you have several input options, right? So you do have HDMI 1, HDMI 2. The indicator of the link basically indicates that those are active. Now, I have my audio coming through one of the ports using, um, again, ARC to be able to get uh, the audio coming out. And then you have a USB, you have sound. We'll look at all those ports in, in a little bit. You do have an app manager. Not a lot going on here, right? So there's basically just, um, you know, for, for some type of sharing. So we'll go ahead and just so you can see. So this is going to give you the ability to do screen sharing and then just uh, connect directly uh, with another device. Um, I haven't been using this. And then you have a file manager to work with um, any kind of files that you may be accessing via USB. Uh, you have your screen mirroring, you have your file manager, which we just discussed, and then you have your Bluetooth, because you can connect this via Bluetooth uh, so that if you do have Bluetooth speakers, you can use this as a solution. So we're going to go into the settings area, and there are several things that you can look at. You can adjust your lighting situation. So here are your lighting settings. I have the light mode I have is bright. Um, you could go standard, and I'll switch to each one of these so you can see the difference. I'll go into soft, and it gets just slightly dimmer. Dynamic, you can see that it changed uh, something right there. So that's, again, really taking into account what's going on in this area. Low dynamic, and then you have a user setting where you can actually control it yourself, right? So you can see, let's look at the difference between dynamic and bright. They almost look the same, right? So uh, I'm gonna go out of this. We also then have projection mode. For those of you who are curious, you do have front projection, rear projection, front ceiling, and rear ceiling projection. So yes, you can mount this if this is something like you do, but I like having mine where you see it just sitting there. So uh, that's a great option. You do have a correction option, right? So you can see uh, basically how things are aligned on the screen. Uh, I would actually advise probably a, a cabinet that is lower to the ground is gonna get you the best fit. My cabinet is still a little bit taller than I'd like it to be, so hence um, the bottom row or that bottom line doesn't come all the way to the bottom. That's just my situation. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the right, I would say, cabinet for this uh, projector. Now you can also go ahead and work with geometric corrections. This has a lot of flexibility. You can see what my geometric looks like. Not 100% perfect, but great, and gives me uh, kind of a feeling of what's going on. Uh, you want to have the best angle and I would say height so that you could have to do very minimal uh, geometric correction. So really when you're placing your screen and you're getting the furniture for a projector like this, you want to make sure that you have something that you have to do the very least in corrections. It just keeps uh, the image integrity. Uh, you also then have focus. Uh, so here's a focus option and you can just adjust the focus we've already done up and down. And then you have your actuator control. Uh, sound options, for those of you who are curious, you can notice that I have ARC as my output and my audio format is auto, but it does support, as we discussed, a lot of different format types. You can see Dolby Automos there, uh, DTS as well. So uh, great options when it comes to audio. Uh, it's all being controlled with the, again, the audio output that I have. Network settings are for your network settings, Bluetooth are for your Bluetooth devices, and then your general setting is really gonna talk about you know, like what happens with your power up, right? So my default source is gonna be the most recently used. You have a sleep timer, you have a standby effect, a power off lamp option, language, you know, time, input method, right? I care, which is if you get too close to the projector, it is going to basically shut off the laser because it is a laser, right? You don't want small children looking into it. You don't want adults looking into it. I get a lot of, a lot of adults who want to look into it. Yes, <laughs> I do. So uh, you can turn that on. Um, I typically have it on when I have guests over. I have no small kids. And then you have like the, the key tone, right? That's going on there. Uh, and then you have your about, and you also do wireless firmware updates. Now at this point, I'm inside of the NVIDIA Shield as my viewing device. And I just wanna highlight, as soon as you press the little menu button on your remote, you can actually look at what your HDMI version is. So you can do 1.4, 2.0. 2 2.0 2 is gonna be the preferred for me. You can also work with your color format, have it either auto or go into one of the two settings you have there. And then you can have as your source info. So this is telling you everything that's coming through and you can see the resolution, the color space, the depth and the codec that's being used based on the fact that nothing's really coming through at this point. Like I, I have nothing streaming, but this is gonna give you a sense of you know, the type of information that you can capture. Now, one of the things I'll highlight about the projector is that it does extremely well with colors. 
I have to highlight again, when you're looking at the left and the right, and this is real time, right? Uh, this is the kind of lit area I'm in, and look at the, the, the depth of the black. As you go into nighttime, the blacks get deeper, they get ink black, in this case because we have a lit room, which is incredibly well lit. This is the kind of color quality I'm getting. You can see that the reds still pop. You can see you know, the logos, how they show up. And you can see also all the detail in the blacks. Now, the one thing I just want to highlight also is look at the very top. Uh, you have no, uh, I would say, reflection on your ceiling. Uh, so the projection that's coming from this projector is just going spot on to the surface. I see nothing at the very top. And sometimes when you're looking at some projectors, depending on how the lasers are being shot and also with the screen itself, you may see uh, some of the some image um, shadowing that happens at the very top. You can also see on the left and the right, uh, even though I've had to adjust the keystone and th that eight point correction somewhat, you don't see any over spillage, which is also pretty uh, amazing. And then when we look at the very bottom, you are noticing that it is cutting off somewhat. I'm not getting the full benefit of this screen or this projector because I just don't have the right cabinet. I need to get another cabinet so that I can bring it down a little bit and I can get the full image on the screen. Uh, it does have some adjustment legs at the very bottom on each one of the sides right there where you can actually adjust the pitch just in case you have a wall that's a little bit off. But I just wanted to show you what this looks like. Now what you're seeing is one of our test video clips. This is a 4K clip that really gives us a sense of what the video quality is gonna look like. Uh, you'll see throughout this video, we're gonna be switching this from light to dark. Uh, we're gonna go through and just highlight the overall capabilities. The one thing I just wanna highlight for you as you're looking at the image here is again, the fact that I am in a very well lit room. And um, in our setting, we have our this is like our living room, right, where we watch movies and or TV, and I can see this from my kitchen, right? And with this type of lighting behind me, there's even more light. Uh, so overall, uh, one other thing I'll highlight about this projector is that it does have a gaming mode. That gaming mode is a low latency mode that's going to allow you to have a great experience when it comes to gaming. Um, if you are an avid, we're talking uh, someone who is really into gaming, is the gaming mode going to be one that you're not going to be able to notice any latency? In my tests, I have to say that while the gaming mode performs really well, you're still going to be able to experience it, especially if you're a hardcore gamer. I really haven't found um, any ultra short throw projector that has a low latency mode that uh, a gamer would be satisfied with. But if you like playing games with your kids, uh, this is definitely going to work. We've not only been using this with uh, you know, our Xbox and our PlayStation, but we've also been using it with our Quest 2 and then doing the actual screen share or the casting, and it's been working fantastically well. So once again, this is the kind of quality that you'll have in daylight, but you'll also see that as we switch to nighttime, you know, this image right here just pops incredibly. And as you look at the rest of this video showing through in the night setting, the video is just superb. Uh, great color quality, and keep in mind that with all projectors, you're gonna be able to adjust the actual uh, colors and get something. If you're liking something that's gonna be highly saturated, you can adjust it. What I found in my experience when looking at this projector is that it's not the most saturated when it comes to colors. You can see in this image right here, um, not highly saturated, but the colors look great. But this is something that if you wanted to modify, you can. I have not modified this at all in any way because I wanna give you the experience of what it would be like if you were to unbox it yourself at home, plug it in and see what the quality is like. The only thing done to this projector is making sure that it fits on that screen. That's absolutely it. So super duper cool projector, great image quality, great performance. And again, just overall, as we take a look at the footprint, it's super tiny. And remember, the neat thing about this type of technology is that this really allows you to have a projector in any room of your home and have a movie theater experience without having to have the theater. That's the cool part. Now I wanted to show you what an angle shot will look like because that's the other thing that's pretty unique about these projectors, right? So as you're looking at these images, uh, I am in an extreme, extreme angle, right? So uh, the screen is right here and you can see where the uh, actual camera is. And you can see the quality of what we're getting when it comes to the image. 
Uh, once again, really, really nice and reproducing colors. I'm very, very happy with the overall performance. Now, to give you a sense of where or how far this projector is, I just want to show you with my hand, right? So this is my wall, right? And you can see where this projector is actually resting. It's a, you know, maybe about 12 to 13 inches to get that 123 uh, inch screen that you're getting. Uh, ultra, ultra quiet too. Very, very whisper quiet fan, very low decibels. You're not gonna hear it, especially if you're sitting, you know, four to five feet away, three to a couple, let's say three, even three feet away, you're not gonna hear it. Because again, you're gonna get stupendous color quality especially at such a short distances because of just the fact that this is a tri-laser. Now, for those of you that are curious about the ports in the back, here you can see the uh, optical coming out, which I'm not using because I'm just using ARC, my two HDMI cables, your network connections. You also then have USB. Uh, and you know, the USB is going to allow you to play anything off of a USB stick. Uh, and very, very simple implementation in the back. You don't really have to worry about anything else there. The power, you can see that found right there on the bottom. There's really nothing else there to it. Now, one thing we'll highlight is that you do have a USB here on the side. So this is on the left side of the projector, but you can see that again, you have the venting here, super quiet. And this is where you'll find your adjustment lengths. There are four, so it allows you to adjust the height in the front or the back, depending on your wall. Now, for those of you who are curious as to what does the light source look like, uh, well, this is what it looks like from the top down. Don't look into the light. Don't look into the light. Well, I'm just messing with you. There's no, you're not going to get anything here, but you can see where the light source can be found right there and how it would project onto the screen. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Caceres A6 tri-laser projector. See you in the next video.